All right, we're about to look at some crazy military stuff. Let's get it. Franklin D. Miller served six tours over six years Vietnam. as a Green Beret in Vietnam. For his first two, he was an infantryman, mainly conducting long-range reconnaissance patrols. The next four years were with Military Assistance Command Vietnam Study and Observations Group, otherwise known as MAC V SOG, the legendary top-secret military unit with a 100% casualty rate. The Green Beret led SOG teams that Shit. operated deep in the mountains and jungles of Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos on the most dangerous search and destroy missions of the war. By the end of those six tours, Miller had been awarded six Purple Hearts, two Bronze Stars with Valor, an Air Medal, a Silver Star, and the Medal of Honor. But the story wow. we're going to be focusing on today is about the operation that earned him the Medal of Honor. What's going on, guys? Welcome Bro. back to another video. Thank you so much for checking it out. Today, we are talking about the legendary war hero, Franklin D. Miller. The story we're talking about today is absolutely breathtaking. And if you've not heard it before, you are in for a wild ride. So All thank right. you guys so much for checking it, it out. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this but if for any reason at all you guys don't enjoy this video please feel free to hit that dislike button and make sure you leave me a comment down below letting me know what i can do to improve my future videos I also guys that. just want to press the dislike and leave a comment how i can improve but really leave a dislike because it's interaction you leave a comment that's more interaction. to let you know franklin d miller did write a book and i will have okay. a link to that book that this story and many others can be found in down in the description below so you guys Bro, can that check that out and make sure you buy his book i highly crazy. recommend it miller routinely writes about just how lucky he was to risk death in the nva badlands but it was on the gray yeah. morning of january 5th 1970 that Miller finally thought he might not make it out alive. He was in charge of a seven-man joint American-South Vietnamese team of Green Berets and Montagnard tribesmen. The team inserted on two UH-1D Hueys, while six Cobra gunships and an additional Huey carrying a Special Forces medic and medical equipment followed in support. The mission was to patrol on foot in Laos, searching for an intelligence aircraft that had been shot down in the area. Then hey. gather information on a North Vietnamese army base from which American surveillance teams had previously intercepted dozens of radio transmissions. The team inserted seamlessly with no issues at all. But hey. while en route, Except Miller one. was running point, doing some recon a bit ahead of the team when he spotted about 40 enemy NVA soldiers sitting in the tan thigh deep grass near the downed American aircraft. So Maybe Miller slowly melted back down into the thigh high grass, returning to his team to inform them of the enemy soldiers ahead. So the team decided to slowly work their way around the enemy soldiers using the thick, tall okay. grass. Okay, so how do we, how, I'm going to be pausing a couple times because this is very interesting. So all of our enemies are in a circle right here. Well, it's a big ass field, but like they're in the circle, right? We're coming this way. Our objective is over here. We can't really call in an airstrike because we're going to plane, right? So all these enemies are in this tall ass bush. The best way to take out enemies is in a L shape. So shooting right here, our teammates are right here. They're shooting this way. So we don't have to worry about our bullets hitting any of the teammates. But if they're all in this area, that L shape is going to be kind of difficult. Okay, so if we get spotted on any flank, so the, if the L flank gets spotted, they're going to get shot at. If they're on this side, they get shot at. And we just have a flat plane like this and shoot forward, we might hit the plane. Oh my God, this is gonna be a crazy, crazy battle. And it's only seven guys versus four. And it might be more than 40, it might be a sniper somewhere. Crazy. As cover, which they were able to pull off successfully. Okay. But hours later, as Miller was once again taking a point, he suddenly heard one shot about 500 to 600 yards in the distance. So. He stayed low, got out his notebook, and he scribbled the shot's timing, location, and direction down in his notebook. While Miller was writing in his notebook, he had no idea that the mother of all firefights was about to take place. Miller writes, Suddenly, strong shockwaves assaulted my body, and my vision blurred, like a camera being jarred. 
My initial reaction was to hit the ground because the first thing you learn about combat is that anything standing gets hit. Down the hill where the rest of the team was located, Miller suddenly saw a gray cloud from an explosive that had just detonated. One of his fellow SOG teammates had triggered a booby trap. Dirt, stones, leaves, and branches fell through the jungle, landing all around him. One of Miller's men staggered toward him, missing his lower jaw, weapon, and rucksack. His clothes ripped all over his body. The explosion had wounded five of the seven-member squad. Miller was thankfully unharmed by the initial explosion due to taking point and being a little ways ahead of his team. Miller quickly entered the kill zone and worked to bring his wounded teammates across a nearby stream to put some distance between them and the enemy so he could call in some reinforcements. In the SOG teams, there were three levels of emergencies. The first was team, when someone was sick or wounded, the least intense of the emergencies. The second was TAC-E, or tactical emergency, when a team was engaging a superior enemy force. And the final was prairie fire, when a team was at risk of being annihilated. Miller called in a tactical emergency and hid, awaiting the NVA's next assault. Unfortunately, even though Miller was able to get his wounded teammates across the stream and hidden in thick bushes, it was not difficult for the NVA forces to track the team due to the large blood trail they left behind. So, the enemy quickly set up a heavy machine gun to cover both ends of the stream and the area Miller's team was hiding out in. Okay, well that is a... A good strategy. I mean, the cover's already blown, right? Cover's blown. We grab our squad mate and the other injured, and we're retreating. They're bleeding, though, so the enemy's going to follow. Okay, the other people that can shoot, set up an LMG, wait for them to just come in. As soon as you see them, fire. Just fucking spray. Just spray. That's all you can do because you're outnumbered by a lot. Some might even start flanking on top of that. An NVA scout they had sent across the stream crept to within 10 yards of Miller's crippled team and discovered them. Miller slowly leaned back, raised his body slightly, and cracked off a single round, dumping the NVA soldier to the ground. Miller quickly dug deeper into the bushes and tall grass he was hiding in as the enemy machine gun opened up with concentrated fire raining down on his position. Miller quickly pulled the pin on a CS gas grenade and hurled it. As whoa, far. whoa, whoa. We had CS gas grenades in Vietnam. Holy shit. I did not know that. I did not know that at all. As he could. He then grabbed a white phosphorus grenade and repeated the effort to create an even heavier, denser fog yeah. that would linger and irritate the enemy troops. It's in their eyes, their mouths, their ears. They, they're going to fall back. They're in pain. There ain't no way they're going to keep moving forward. But now that gas and that phosphorus is in the area. So the people that are injured, they need to move even farther away. Who Miller hoped would disengage. Miller then worked with his wounded teammates to help conceal them as good as they possibly could, covering them with mud, grass, bushes, anything he could find to hide them from the enemy forces. Once his teammates were well hidden, Miller then moved on foot alone through the thick jungle and hid behind a section of rocks and fallen timber, where he ambushed a seven-man NVA element and focused his controlled bursts of fire on the machine gunner first. For more than two and a half hours, Miller waged a one-man fight against an estimated 100 NVA troops, dodging hand grenades, bullets, and shrapnel. Miller writes, The saddest of all was the sight of my team. My friends, the scene was basically composed of just two colors, green and red. Blood-drenched bandages attempted to stop the outpouring of life from the four who were scattered in the grass before me. Amazingly enough, all were in various stages of consciousness, though I could tell that at least one of them wouldn't survive. A C-130 orbiting about 25,000 feet overhead radioed Miller with instructions to locate a nearby bomb crater to arrange a medevac. Miller managed to reach the site, but then the lights went out. He was shot in the chest. He collapsed and faded in and out of shock, 
Miller, completely dazed by his wound, cut off a piece of poncho liner with his pocket knife and stuffed it into the hole in his chest. He then swung his M16 rifle around his waist and let loose two or three bursts of fire at the four NVA soldiers, who were now shocked Miller was somehow still alive. Two were killed instantly. A third was caught in the back while attempting to flee Miller, and the fourth managed to escape into the woods. Miller then somehow rose to his feet, crashed through bushes and vegetations, and crawled 50 yards to regroup with his team. Once he reached them, he pushed and dragged every member back to the crater. His teammates, Yube and Hobart, assisted with security, though they were seriously wounded themselves. Just as they felt they were going to be overrun by the enemy, a Huey swooped in and hovered within five yards of the large crater in the jungle. The chopper, though, raced back into the air when more than 50 NVA soldiers attacked with small arms, mortars, and rockets. In the chaos, Miller was struck in the left arm. The wound was so severe he thought his hand had been blown off entirely, rendering his arm completely useless. This was it, Miller thought, his final stand, down to one magazine and an additional frag grenade. Through a daze... In and out of consciousness, Miller saw a figure holding an M60 machine gun and issuing hand signals in his direction. It was a hatchet force, an entire platoon of Montagnard supported by American advisors. Soon, okay. more helicopters arrived, and Miller refused to leave until everyone else yeah, squad. was on yeah. board. Recon Team Vermont yeah. and the hatchet force flew out to safety. Four of Miller's seven-man team had been killed, while Miller... Yub and Hobart survived. Miller was first recommended to receive the Distinguished Service Cross, but it was ultimately upgraded to the Medal of Honor. Miller retired from the Army in 1992 as a Command Sergeant Major. He often nice. told new Special Forces trainees to share your fears with yourself and your courage with others, because you will inspire people to do things that are incredible. 2000, Miller died at the age of 55 years old. If it had not been for Miller's unbelievable Courage. heroic actions, this would have been a whole lot worse. 100%. The entire team would have been completely 100%. annihilated. Yub and Hobart Happened might enough. have been killed by the enemy, but most likely they would have been captured. And I, I don't think it. I have to explain what would have happened to them if they had been captured by the enemy. I share these stories with you to make sure that men like Franklin D. Miller are never forgotten and that their names live on in our memories. Franklin D. Miller, thank you for your service. It has been an honor sharing your story. Like I said, guys, you can find a link to Franklin D. Miller's book down in the description below, and I cannot recommend it enough. Thank you guys so much for checking this video out. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll definitely be making a whole lot more videos on Franklin D. Miller. This guy was an absolute hero, man. Absolute hero. He tried his best. And that is absolute insane. Wild story. Wild man. It's orders, grenades, got shot several times. Crawled 50 meters, grabbed his team, caught in the evac. Bro, absolute. Absolute. Vietnam was a crazy, all wars are crazy, right? All wars are crazy. There's no war that's like, ah, oh, that wasn't so bad. Like, no, all Vietnam. Wow. My grandfather shared some stories with me. We talked the other day. He's telling me some Vietnam stories. This is the first time he ever told me these Vietnam stories. I might share them with you guys one day. They're, they're wild. But for some reason, my grandfather, he's a, he's a comedian, man. He just, he tells me these crazy stories. And then at the end of the story, he always laughed. He's like, ha, man, those were crazy times. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> the, like, oh, my God. But, yeah, man. Rest in peace. Everybody that served. Everybody that didn't get a chance to come home. And thank you guys all for your service. If it wasn't for you guys. It, I don't even know how to finish that, but I want to know what happened to the plane. The mission was to secure that CIA plane. What happened after that? Mission wasn't 
successful initially, but then they got reinforcements. Did the reinforcements drive off the rest of the the enemies and then they got to the plane? Like I, I wanna know how the rest of the we already know how Vietnam ended. It wasn't an amazing ending, but or isn't always black and white good enough. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time.